Starting to look a lot better down there. We had a lot of rain this morning and there's only a little bit of standing water in that one little spot right there. I really thought that whole back corner, I tried to do it real good as far as drainage. I hadn't completed that little trench that was gonna flow the water from the other way. So I was worried that a bunch of it was gonna dump into there, but it looks like it did pretty good. I'm real happy with that. So hopefully tomorrow we'll get the gravel truck delivery and it won't sink too much. It's, it's still gonna be raining more. This is after a day of really heavy, long rains, and it's just a little kind of mushy in a couple little spots there. So uh, I gotta be careful though. And what I was concerned about, luckily the drainage does go that way, but I was digging a trench, or had planned on digging a trench where this natural water flow kind of comes down. And I was gonna snake it this way, because I didn't, this isn't really where it used to go. It used to go stop there, but I see this washed it out and that water did come down into here. So it, it was originally running next to it here, so I thought it'd be okay, but it just washed that out a little bit. So I just need to, I just need to dig the trench so the water flow goes away from down into here and on its kind of natural course there. So not a big concern, but the fact that all that did leak into here and it's still solid ground, that's, uh, that's nice. And I did cover this with chert, so it's not, it's not muddy, you know, it's not sticking to my boots. Um, that's good. Getting ready to lay the Geotex fabric out here. Um, it helps hold the rock together and stop it from pushing down into the ground. Um, it's really like having another few inches of stone down that you don't really have. It, it's uh, up top. I really liked it on the clay surface where normally your tires would sink in. Uh, this stops the rock from pushing down into the clay and it holds things together. I really, I, I think it's a great product. All right, there's the geomesh down. It is staked down and should pretty much just stay in its place when they run over it and until they pour the gravel on it. But you can see that it goes back a little further than the current pad. So we'll, we'll gravel all the way back to the back. Um, but I'm not really worried about, you know, no tires are ever gonna go back there because the tires are always offset. So I just want this under where the tires would be or any kind of jacking points or anything to stop the jack from sinking down in as much. And then uh, this is nice and safe now and we'll, we're gonna gravel around here too so that it keeps your shoes clean. But this is already chert, again, doesn't stick to you. Probably need to rake this out a little bit here so it's a little bit down, but we got, we got plenty of time. It's gonna be a couple hours before the crush and run gets here. We're using Crush and Run on it. It's $301 for an entire dump truck full of Crush and Run, as opposed to if I go with a larger stone, it's going to be about $600. Crush and Run's all we used on the driveway. It also has the solids in there, which are nice because we're going to compact it. So I think it's going to turn out real good. So Kelly's golf cart came with a charger, 36 volts. And it just plugs right in a big plug right there in the front. Charged up here for her today. Okay, my gravel truck's just getting ready to arrive here. And got the site pretty well. I went ahead and cleared out that hill over here too, just to make this more of a flat, usable area. Um, I just got to rake out that little bit right there. Kelly's bringing down my rake and shovel now. Kelly's compacting the chert with her golf cart. <laughs> So this is gonna end up being mulch over here. So there's the clay under soil with lots of rock. And then I put a few buckets of chert down on top, mashed it down. And so it's pretty level, I ran the box blade across it a couple times. So Kelly wants mulch over here on this side and then gravel everywhere else. It's pretty well graded pretty good. That's where we're gonna end up building a little storage shed and uh, the whole approach again here will all be gravel. It's got nice larger stones underneath of it here, gravel mix. 
That'll be nice. And nothing's ever sunk in here before, so. Nope, it's still got a bunch in there. It's still got a bunch. I thought you were gonna. There you go. There's our mulch for now, the head, and the gravel.
I think it came out pretty good. Gravel's fairly level. I have this corner dipping down just a little bit for water to shed. Plus it's part of the turnaround. When you go that way, you gotta back up, back over it. And I didn't wanna have too high of a hill. But this one, the bus will be able to park back farther. So the wheels won't be on that uneven part. That should be real nice. Probably need to put a little bit more chert over there. I see there is some clay there, not necessarily all just chert. Um, would have been nice to have enough gravel to put there, but I just, I don't right now. So yeah, it, I'm real happy with it. It turned out real good. It's gonna rain again tonight. We'll see how, how it does. Hopefully all of our mulch won't wash away because we don't have any kind of an edge or anything to hold it in there. You're not gonna lay a board down though. Let me think about that. I don't know what that is. It's probably some kind of weed thing, but it's pretty. But our blackberries are really coming in. We've got about 5,000 of these bushes on the property. Well, there's the aerial view. Man, that was a lot of work. This is a little flashlight we got, Kelly. Um, the Baton 2, it comes in purple. It's from Olight. It is on sale right now, and there's a link in the description. Um, super bright flashlight. You'll see the video that we shot with it last night. Uh, rechargeable LED, obviously. It's just a really cool flashlight. We got several really neat Olight ones. We have a big sale going on right now for the next couple days. You might want to go check them out and click the link in the description. So we're driving in our golf cart at night, coming back from the neighbor's house. And using the Olight flashlight here for our headlights. <laughs> it's really good. This flashlight is so bright it can see through my friggin' hands. You can see your bones and stuff inside. That's crazy bright. <laughs> That's through my hand. Check the air and all those duels. It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? Well, he's got a long, hard ride. In old Lenny, the silver sides. Get that bus grease monkey on the road. Well, he's got that hammer down and that 47 hound. It's that bus grease monkey on the road. He travels all around and he's coming to your town. Get that bus grease monkey down the road. Watch that bus grease monkey do his thing. Thirty years behind that barn, cause it don't run worth a darn. Watch that bus grease monkey make it sing. He knows in Detroit there's no doubt upside down and inside out. It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? Saving buses far and wide in that old blue silver sides. It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? Now he's moved his family to the hills of Tennessee. Watch that bus grease monkey make his home. Bring him buses back to life with the help of his dear wife. Watch that bus grease monkey get it done. Well, he travels town to town working on them old greyhounds. It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? Saving buses far and wide, you know, Lenny the Silver Sides. It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? It's that 
Sat bus, grease, monkey, don't you know?